Welcome to Decks for Humans. My name is Greg Deckler, and in this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to visualize your decks. So in the last episode, we created this measure called Sum No Pickle. And what this does is that the Sum No Pickle starts out with the entire table of data. We then filter that data to where we take out any rows that are uh, equal, to pick, equal to pickle. So we're only returning the rows in this uh, table where the item is not pickle. We then perform a sum x aggregation across that filtered table and return the result. Now, just for reference, this is the table that we start out with. So we have two pickle rows, two banana rows, and a grapefruit row. And when we do this, we come back with this 38.89 as a result from that calculation for, for sum no pickle. Okay, so what I'm going to show you today is how to visualize every step along the way. And we're going to do this by using a function called 2CSV. And this is a function that originally was brought to my attention uh, by Brian Julius as a way to debug or troubleshoot or visualize your DAX. So what we can do, since we've constructed each step as a variable, we can actually use 2CSV and we can bring back the original table variable. And when we do that, We'll hit enter here. You can see in this card visual, it's actually brought back the table. So I have my table item, price, quantity, and etc. Um, if I make this a little bit smaller, we don't need it to be 45, we'll make it 24. Okay, so now you can see the full table. So now what I'm starting, you can see here I have my pickle row, banana row, pickle row, banana row, grapefruit row. So it's just returning the table. That's this table, and obviously that makes sense because we haven't done anything to that table yet. All we've done is set the table variable equal to table. Now, if I take my variable here, so no pickle table, and I paste that in here and return it. Now you can see I have grapefruit, banana, banana, but no pickle rows. Well, because I've filtered the pickle rows out. And then, obviously, some no pickle. We don't really need to do with two CSV because that's not a table. That's just a scalar or a single value if you will but this allows you to visualize what's going on at each step of the way so now if i set this back to table and i take this measure where it really becomes invaluable is when trying to determine uh things you know what is in context what's out of context or what is filtered remember context just means filtered um, in this case of this card visualization there is no filtering of this card visualization unless I would pick something from this slicer. But in this table, things are a little different. So if I were to add the sum no pickle measure to my table, you can see, and I'm going to turn off the, the totals. That's a subject for another matter. But you can see I have my banana row, my grapefruit row, my pickle row. Well, the only thing in my table for the banana row are just the banana rows, which makes sense. This banana value here is filtering the table, so it's just banana rows. Same thing with grapefruit. It's only the grapefruit row. And then the pickle, it's only the pickle row, or pickle rows. If I switch this to my filtered, where I filter out my pickles, obviously the first two rows, are nothing is going to change. I still have bananas and grapefruit. But as you can see in the pickle row, I don't have any, because I filtered out the pickles um, in that next table. And so then, if I just return my actual result, of sum no pickle, you can see I get my 38.9. Well, for my banana row, 23.92 is the same as the sum of the total cost. Same for the grapefruit, but the pickle, I get blank or zero, essentially. This all makes sense, right? When I when you when we were looking at what was going on under the hood, obviously this is already filtered for bananas, so filtering out pickle rows doesn't do anything. And same for grapefruit. This is already filtered for just the grapefruit rows, so filtering out the pickles doesn't do anything. But for the pickle row, all it has, all this row has in here is just pickle rows, and when I filter those out, I'm left with nothing. So, this is going to become invaluable as we write more and more advanced DAX code. Now, I know maybe what you're thinking is, Greg, DAX really can't be this simple. Um, well, yes, it can be. 
um, you know, I'm not lying to you or anything else. You've already learned, if you've watched from about episode five until now, you've already learned essentially all of the essentials that you're, that you're ever going to need to uh, solve the vast majority of DAX problems that you're going to run across. Um, and I'll prove that in upcoming videos where we'll tackle some more, um, more complex, I guess you could say, problems that you can solve in DAX, um, as well as we're going to start covering some other features, functionalities of DAX, functions, and that sort of thing. But that's all for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.